Water shortages are becoming real for residents, actually drying out the taps. Over the weekend, parts of Joburg and Schwane were without water, reportedly as a result of restrictions from Rand water. But Rand Dipkloof, parts of Soweto, were in danger of running dry today. Municipal authorities have pleaded with City of Joburg residents to reduce their water usage to avoid restrictions being increased to level three. So what does this all mean? To discuss, we're joined by Hillgard Matthews from Johannesburg Water. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Hilgard, yes. what's the situation in Joburg? Because early there were those warnings, Midran, Dipkloof, Orlando East in Soweto uh, could actually run out today. Yes, uh, we did have those warnings and I can tell you for instance in the Midrand region water has been back since this morning. Uh, in Dipkloof our reservoir recovered quite well and we restored water flow around 4 this afternoon. Uh, in Lanasia we battled a little bit and so we need to pump water into the tower that provides water to the high lying areas. Uh, but that's it in terms of restrictions and the effect of it within the city of Johannesburg for now. Okay, so not too bad at this moment. Not too bad at all. But uh, these, these reservoirs, how do they run dry? Is that uh, a natural thing or are you choosing not to fill up the reservoirs because of the restrictions? How exactly is it working? I simply love your questions. Um, what happens is that Rand Water provides water to us, so mm -hmm. they pump that into our system. It goes into our reservoirs. Now remember Rand Water restricted by 15%. And so it's a case of less water coming into our system. Now we've been pleading with the public for probably now six weeks now to reduce. Um, it hasn't assisted us very much and you will see that maybe a week ago we had a substantial saving of 7% but all the other weeks 0 0.9, 0 0.9. So we're not going anywhere. And so we. What happened in that 7% week? Was there a marketing drive? How come all of a sudden I people listened? In that 7% in that week, it's because we had five days of consistent rain around Gauteng. And so it just proves the point that we've been making since last year, November. And that is that 40% and more of the water in the Gauteng region goes towards outdoor activities, of which is predominantly gardening okay. and so, so people are still watering their gardens in the heat of the day absolutely this, yeah. we brag with our gardens and we would rather have a beautiful garden than have consistent water supply every day sure. so we need to choose what is more important for us in the in, in this region so within the city of Johannesburg coming back to the reservoir so we do not restrict the inflow into the reservoir and so what we've done over the past uh, probably a week or so is that we have restricted the outflow on the reservoir so with it comes reduction in pressure so normally you would have maybe uh, done something uh, watered your garden uh, at the applicable times or do whatever and mm. the pressure would have been stronger but now it's less and so what happened over the weekend is that in certain areas we had a situation where the demand exceeded the inflow into 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 the reservoirs and because of that uh, certain areas ran dry. Now what we do is when we see that that reservoir is going to go completely dry we need to protect our infrastructure because when that system goes completely, completely dry we need to put water and pressure back into the system and we need to make sure that our reservoirs are protected in the same way that Rand Water needs to protect their reservoir. Mm -hmm. So all the municipalities around we, 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 we have to do the same thing and so what happened in Midrand and other areas areas are that uh, demand exceeded supply and then it starts with the high lying areas first and then going to the lower lower lying areas. Isn't this a, quite a precarious situation because uh, Playing around with the water pressure, it can hurt the pipes, it can hurt your infrastructure, it can hurt our infrastructure and complexes. Um, uh, are you handling it? We are, we are handling it as best as we could. And by way of introduction, you mentioned level three restrictions. When we go to level three restrictions, and that is something that the entire Johannesburg water, we want to stay away from it. When you talk to the engineers, you can see they become quiet. You be see they become defensive because level, level three water restrictions basically entail that we close that valve, no water goes out, and then we open it 
it at a specific day, uh, at a specific time in day. Now, a lot of people are saying is, but why don't you just do it? The mm -hmm. electricity guys did that when we had a, an electricity shortage. It doesn't quite work the same way because when when the electricity guys bring on the switch, switch it back on. The assumption is that all the transformers and every wo everything works well and therefore within a second or two you've got supply within your house, not with water, because the system runs dry up until to the lowest point. So when we then have to recharge that entire system, the water runs into the reservoir straight out down to the lowest point, then starts filling up as the hills and whatever within Joburg uh, are outlying within the city and so before you know it we will have water after about five six hours in the reservoir the reservoir must then pick up to a certain level before we can start pumping water to the water towers that services the high-lying areas in that area. Sure, so this is like load shedding for water, but it doesn't work very efficiently. It's, it's not it's efficient. It's hard to control those. those and you levels. mentioned what you said earlier. Uh, it damages the pipes. Um, the engineers call it a, a water hammer. And so the moment you bring that water back into the system, you're bringing pressure back into the system, but the system now has got air in it as well. So the water is fighting with the pressure against the air, mm. and now you have pipes bursting, and uh, consequently we don't want to go to the, the level 3 water restrictions because we will create more chaos. Okay, so how do we avoid level 3? We, we have to start saving. Is, is that the situation here, or it has to rain? Two months ago already. Um, and, and, and so what we need to do is, as the city of Johannesburg, the Department of Water Affairs and Sanitation, they're only asking for us to save 15%. 40% goes to gardens. Are we saying truly that our gardens are so important, that our outdoor activities are so important, that we would rather sacrifice our consistent supply daily for a garden? And so we need to save and we need to save drastically for us to make up that 15 percent. It's I guess it's hard because you cannot actually pick out the the culprits or, or can you not start to see where people are flouting the the savings request that you, you have made? You know I wish we had a mechanism where uh, like in the electricity Name situation you know <laughs> you can switch off uh, the geysers remotely. Yeah. Unfortunately we cannot switch off water supply at a, a, a local level where you are at your plot or at your property or within your flat. So we can't do that. However, we as a community, we need to start regulating and governing and policing ourselves. I just heard of a complex within, uh, within the region that sent out a notice to all the residents to say, if you continue watering your gardens, we will give you a fine as the complex administrators. Mm. And so that is what we need to do. We need to police ourselves and our neighbors, but please do it in such a way that you don't have fisticuffs and other things because of water. All right. And, and how much rain would we need? Are, are you watching the weather patterns? Uh, is that something that you, you think about? Um, how much would we actually need to, to solve this? We're absolutely watching whatever happens. Last week when uh, the the weather service has uh, indicated that we will have these hot days. We already started on social media to the, our media partners and just say please ask everybody to reduce because we knew that with the rains gone, the heat wave back, we're all going to go back to our old habits. Mm. And so yes, uh, every day that it rains we know it's probably another two days that people won't be watering. But you do get some people, a day after that it had rained, the sprinklers or whatever would be on in uh, where it is allowed because different municipalities allow different things within the region. And so, um, as the Department of Water Affairs and Sanitation had indicated, we probably need about uh, two months of good consistent rain um, for us to, two months, yeah. to, to get to a point where we are reasonable. And they did indicate that we, the, the, the water restrictions would only be lifted if the Val River system reaches 80%. And, and currently we're on about 26%. The, the, the dam is 26 the dam, okay. but the system is probably around 48-49%. Okay, and we need that right up. It, finally, put this in context for me. When last were we here? How bad is this <laughs> when you had the Val Dam at, at 26%? Well, the, older, the older guys will tell you it's probably in the 1980s that we had it. Um, and. And the Val Dam uh, as, as well, why the Department of Water Affairs cannot just uh, pump 
a lot of water into it because it's very shallow. So the level of precipitation would be too high. So you will, we will just lose more water uh, than uh, actually saving it. So when and it's that's hot, it just basically evaporates. It evaporates, and so Apparently we need Stag to all Fontaine work together. Is is full of water, but that's kind of being kept as as our safeguard. That is the bank. That is that is your savings. You and I uh, was got that little fifty rands uh, stuck under the mattress. You know the Stagfontein Dam is our is our mattress. It's that for that, that rainy day when you know you need it. And so in this case, the Starkfontein Dam, we do not want to use it unnecessarily. If we can save, if we can everybody come together, it's not necessary to touch it. All right. Thank you for your time. A great explanation, a very dire, dry situation. That was Hilgard Matthews from Johannesburg Water and talking about that heat wave uh, really making things much worse. Let's see what you can expect from the weather desk.